FBCG family, let me hear y'all make some noise. You know it's working, come on, get up out your seat. Let's go, let's go. All my young people, make some noise. Let's go, let's go. Say, say, change breaking for my sake. Hey, for my sake. Mountains are moving for my sake. Onaga is my song, guys. You know, Onaga. 
Naga. I love that song. My name is Joy Barnett, and I am honored to be your presider for this service. <laughs> you may be seated. We are so glad that you decided to worship with us today because today is Children and Youth Sunday, also known as Remix Sunday. Before we get started, I would like to shout out our online worshipers. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Let us know where you're worshiping from. You can rep your city, rep your state, rep your country. You can even rep your continent if you're feeling those type of vibes today. And don't forget to share this link with your loved ones so that they can worship with us too. We will now have scripture and prayer. Please turn with me to Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on its shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. The word of God is already blessed. <laughs> Please bow your heads and close your eyes for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this Sunday service and for allowing us to be able to gather here and worship in your name. Thank you for allowing Pastor Jenkins to be able to return, and thank you for the blessing that he and his family has been in all of our lives. I pray for everybody here that you will be able to provide them with what they need and allow them to continue to rely on you. Thank you for our youth and for allowing them to be able to shine their light for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We are now at the point of our service where we would like to welcome our guests. If you are our first time guest and you would like to learn more about our ministry, there is a QR code that will appear on the screen. If you scan it, it will take you to our church bulletin where you can fill out a guest connection card so that you can learn about all of the amazing events that we have here happening at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International where our mission and vision statement is developing dynamic disciples through discipleship, discipline, and duplication. If you are a first time guest with us here in the sanctuary, may you please stand so that we can acknowledge you. And if you are our first time guest worshiping with us online, If you are a first-time guest worshiping with us online, can you please type first-timer or put a number one in the chat so that we can welcome you as well. Now, FBCG family, let's greet our guests pandemic style with air high fives, air hugs, you know, fist bumps, all that good stuff as we greet one another. And as we're greeting each other, we will hear another selection from our praise team. Go ahead, stand up, greet your neighbor. Tell somebody what's up, give them a high five, and welcome to FBCG. Come on. We are the church, this is the hour for the kingdom. No greater time to shine our light for the king. Say it. What a privilege, what a privilege and, an and an honor just to, just to, serve to make his, make his glory to every
Come celebrate First Lady Trina Jenkins in commemoration of her birthday. Let's give her flowers of appreciation that she can smell now. The drop-in celebration will include live music, fun, food, games, and more. Meet us this afternoon from 4 to 6 p.m. at the FBCG Family Life Center. There'll be no virtual Bible study this Tuesday. Instead, live in-person baptism will be held at the Ministry Center. Virtual Bible study resumes Tuesday, May 24th. Join Pastor Jenkins this Thursday, May 19th at 7 p.m. as the guest preacher at Resurrection Baptist Church for the pastoral anniversary revival for Pastor Marcus Jerkins. Resurrection Baptist Church is located at 900 Ednor Road in Silver Spring, Maryland. Many of us have faced trauma and did not know we were traumatized. Having severe pain or anxiety, a prolonged illness, domestic violence, or childhood abuse are examples. You don't have to be a victim of these events to be a victor. Join Life Builders Ministry virtually on Zoom in collaboration with Mental Health Ministry as we discuss trauma, the struggles we face, Saturday, May 21st at 6 p.m. To register, visit FBC Glen Arden slash Life Builders. The Institute Spring Virtual Test Out is scheduled for Saturday, May 28th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Test Out is available for these classes. If you believe that you're fully knowledgeable in a particular course and want to receive credit, sign up. Register at fbcglenarden.org slash the institutes or for more information, email the institutes at fbcglenarden.org. Many businesses and ministries worldwide suffered during the pandemic. However, by God's grace, FBCG thrived during this tumultuous season. Now we'll share how our church has been able to maintain and how we are positioning ourselves to strengthen the global body of Christ and our community. The Virtual Beyond Conference is June 17th and 18th. We will teach you how to leverage your digital presence and learn valuable strategies that will stand the test of a new hybrid world. Spread the news. Visit thebeyondconference.com to learn more and to register. Couples, it's time to get away with your spouse for three days and two nights to relax, restore, and refresh for Love Beyond Limits Couples Getaway, July 14th through the 16th at Hilton Norfolk, the Main. Registration includes two night hotel accommodations, all general sessions, two meals, fun activities, and entertainment. You'll enjoy dynamic sessions, fun activities, and plenty of free time. For more information and to register, visit fbcglenarden.org slash couplesretreat22. FBCG's Vacation Bible School is scheduled for July 18th through the 22nd. This year, Spark Studios will connect children and adults with their creative gifts. Each day, attendees will learn more about God's grand design and how each of us fits into his ultimate masterpiece. It's free and will be held on-site and online beginning at 9 a.m. daily for children and adults. Adults can choose evening sessions that start at 7 p.m. All classes will be virtual on Tuesday, July 19th. Register online at fbcglenarden.org slash vbs. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these events and others on our church website at fbcglenarden.org. What's up, First Baptist family? How y'all doing online, family? My name is Reverend Jonathan Queen. I am grateful to be the youth pastor here at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International. We want to take this moment to thank Pastor Jenkins for the opportunity, not only to have this amazing Remix Sunday, but to take a moment to recognize one of our outstanding ministries in children and youth. I am blessed to have with me the directors of Children's Bible Study, Miss Melinda Tillman and Chantel Early. Can y'all celebrate them? <laughs> children's Bible Study serves to develop children to become dynamic disciples for Jesus Christ. They meet every Tuesday virtually at 6 p.m. and they are doing an amazing job. Today they have selected one of their young students to be recognized for a character trade award. Can y'all help me welcome and celebrate Miss Brianna Perry. Y'all can do better than that. Well, let me tell y'all what she's being celebrated for. Miss Brianna Perry is receiving her award for perfect attendance. 
She is a seven-year-old second grader at Brandywine Elementary School. Watch this, she's a straight-A student with a GPA of 4.0. Brianna is a loving daughter, a sister, and a friend. She is an energetic, competitive cheerleader who also enjoys outdoor activities. Brianna is very engaged learner at school and at church, and she has a genuine love for God. For the past two years, Children's Bible Study has had to meet virtually on Tuesday evenings, and Brianna has been to every class. I said every class. It, it says even when she was not feeling well, Brianna was there, Bible open, always prepared for class, and check this, Brianna counts as one of her highlights, the fact that she was able to be baptized, even virtually, this past December at the First Baptist Church at Glen Arden. Will y'all help me celebrate Miss Brianna Perry? We celebrate Brianna. If you'd like to learn more about Children's Bible Study or any of the Children and Youth Department Ministries, you can find us on fbcgglenarton.org. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Let's give her another round of applause. It is now time for tithes and offering. <laughs> Thank you, FBCG family, for being such phenomenal givers. Because of your giving, we are still able to serve those in need, feed the hungry, and host classes and events. We recently had our first successful launch of Alpha Youth at the U. And events like these are only possible because of your giving. In our new technological age, you can now give online at fbcglenarden.org forward slash give. But if you would still like to do it old school, there are boxes at every entrance of the sanctuary and you can drop off your offering following the service. We will now pray over the offering. Dear Lord, Thank you for this day. I pray for the offering that you're about to receive. I pray that you bless the gift and the giver and that it will be used to glorify your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. It is now time for the word of God. After this next election, the next voice you will hear will be that of the awesome, most amazingest pastor ever, Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr. <laughs>
Sing it. And right now, through the good times, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Can we give it up to the greatest power of all? The God of gods. He's the King of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. Can we just take a couple more seconds as our pastor comes? And let's just lift our voices. And let's open our hearts. To the God of gods, he's the God alone. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Our God is worthy to be praised. Help me celebrate these young people who are leading us in worship today. They have been amazing, and I'm so proud of them. I am so glad to be back home. And actually, let me take a moment before I get too far off track and say happy birthday to my beloved wife. Today is her 62nd birthday. And we invite you to stop by this, evening, this afternoon, 4 to 6, and we're going to be 
celebrating her birthday. It's going to be inside the Family Life Center, so it doesn't matter whether it's raining or not. It's going to be inside, and you're invited, amen, to come and show her some love. She's been a tremendous wife, a tremendous mother, a tremendous first lady. And we celebrate her. You can be seated for a moment. I'm going to have you stand back up in just a moment or two. I just, again, want to celebrate these young people. They've been doing a great job. I have been gone for too long. Um, and I want to just uh, thank so many people I want to thank. I want to, first of all, thank God for protecting me and keeping me on my travels. <laughs> I have been traveling the world. Uh, I've been to Italy, uh, Rome, Italy. I went to uh, Greece, Athens, Greece, Israel, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, <clears throat> Dubai, <clears throat> Saudi Arabia. Each of the trips had something different. Uh, as a part of my master's program, some of y'all know I is in a master's program. And I'm hoping that's an inspiration to somebody that even though here I am, I, got, I turned 60 years old and got into a master's program, um, that you're never too old to improve yourself and better yourself and do better yourself. And so um, I got in this master's program and I got, we're down to my last two, two cl class, classes and I'll be done, bless his name, glory to God, thank you Jesus. Uh, and one of those classes was a New Testament class and uh, so for those, uh, the Israel and Italy and Greece, all of those trips were a part of that class. I had an opportunity to go where Paul the Apostle walked, where he started churches, where he preached, where he did miracles, how God used him. Uh, saw where Jesus carried the cross, saw where he was uh, crucified, where he was buried. And by the way, I went in the tomb, and guess what? He was not there. <laughs> Glory to God. And then while I was there, uh, thank God my wife and two of my kids went with me. Um, uh, we decided to just get a little rest and went to Dubai. And so we went to Dubai for a few days and rested and chilled and sight saw and just, I was able to get some much needed rest. And I'm so thankful for that. And then uh, what this trip to Saudi Arabia came up after we had planned everything. And so instead of me flying all the way back here and then flying all the way back to Saudi Arabia, I just stayed over in Dubai. A wife, a first lady, and my kids came back home, but I went to Saudi Arabia. I was invited to be a part of a religious forum among world religions where only 15 American religious leaders were invited. I was one of 15 <laughs> Americans. <laughs> representing um, uh, representing uh, the evangelical community. And so I am, I was honored. And I got back uh, Thursday and I'm exhausted. That 15 hour plane ride ain't no joke. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, that's a long time to be cooped up in one place. Uh, but thank God um, we were able to make it. And then yesterday, um, well, then I came back Thursday and then Friday morning I had to get up and fly to Denver for, um, you know, some people think the pastor, all he do is sit around and just work, wait to preach on Sundays. <laughs> so I had to catch a flight to Denver. I was the commencement speaker for the Denver Seminary graduation in Denver. And they gave me an honorary doctorate degree yesterday. Isn't that great? I'm Dr. Jenkins to y'all now, just... <laughs> 
So um, it's been a whirlwind trip, but I've missed you all. I'm so grateful to be back home. I miss the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. There ain't no place like this place. And I'm so glad to be back. I want to thank uh, all of the people who filled in, Pastor Jeffrey Johnson preaching for us on the fourth Sunday. Thank the Lord for him. Uh, Pastor Maurice Watson, thank God for him. Thank First Lady and my daughters for filling in last Sunday. And so uh, I want to just thank our staff. I've been gone for almost a month and our staff has kept the church running without fanfare or drama or anything. And I want to salute our chief operating officer, Dr. W uh, Dr. Jones, Dr. Joseph Jones. Stand up, Dr. Jones. He's kept everything rolling and strolling. Great. Appreciate it so very much. Uh, he and, and uh, just thank all of everybody for doing what they did. I didn't have to worry about a thing. I would say I didn't think about y'all, but that wasn't true. That wouldn't be true. But I'm so glad to be back. Amen. And I'm so thankful for the mercy of God and what he is doing in this place. Uh, at some point in the future, I hope to talk about the trip and tell you uh, some of the things I saw and some of the things I gained from traveling around the world and seeing how different cultures live. And, uh, uh, but I'm so grateful that I live with all of the troubles our country has. I'm so glad I live in the United States of America. The other places are nice to visit, but there ain't no place like coming back home. And you know, so I'm grateful to be here. So thank you for your prayers and thank you for your support. I'm grateful and thankful for that. I want to pray this morning. Just join me in prayer. Stand up and pray with me for just a moment. If you don't, I want to pray for just a moment. Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege to live for you. I pray that you take these next few moments and speak to our hearts challenge us today that we might be everything you want us to be and accomplish the things you want us to accomplish and do the things you called us to do i pray for you to put a hedge of protection around this place i pray for our online family that lord you would transcend location and speak to their hearts and allow us all to be and do what you're calling us to be and do that your name be at all of the glory and all of the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, you can be seated. And open your Bibles to Luke chapter 15. Um, that young lady that was presiding, is her Joy? Joy, you are, come here. How old are you? I'm 17. 17, what school you go to? I go to the Academy of Health Sciences. You, you did a fantastic job this morning. I want to salute you. So proud of your personality, your courage, and all that you do. Keep doing what you're doing, okay? Thank you. All right, keep doing going what you're doing. Luke 15 is what I want to speak from for just a few moments today, beginning of verse one. Here's what it says. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him, and the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. Stop there for a moment. They're complaining because Jesus is hanging out with sinners. So he spoke to this parable to them, verse 3, saying, what man of you having a hundred sheep if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he, had found, when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. 
I want to talk about recovering lost sheep. Say that, recovering lost sheep. Tell your neighbor, it's time to recover some lost sheep. Hear these disciples, hear, I mean, hear these scribes and Pharisees, hear these, the, the people are complaining because Jesus has hung out with unchurched people. And I thought I should talk about this for a few moments today because Jesus gives us some direction and some clarity about what it is his will for his disciples to be and to do. It is in fact a call for God, from God, from Jesus himself to you. And I recognize that some of you are so righteous and so clean and so holy that you wouldn't dream about hanging out with sinners. But that's exactly what Jesus talks about. He says, he gives them a parable. As a matter of fact, in chapter 15, Jesus goes through three parables to challenge the religious people of his day, the church-going people, the synagogue attenders, to challenge them in their participation in engaging in the life of people who don't always think like you, believe like you, walk like you, practice what you practice. He challenges them to live their lives rubbing off, to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world is what he is saying. It is a call from God to us, to you and I, that Jesus is saying to you and I today that our assignment in life is to engage with people outside of your belief systems. I know we have, as a church, have preached for you to come out from among them, we have said. We have preached to you to, to, to hang out. And that's true when you first get saved. It's true that you got to establish a level of maturity and strength so you don't get straight off. But if after you've been around the kingdom for 15 years, it seems like you ought to know enough word and enough Jesus and have a strong enough relationship with him that after you've been around him for a little while that you ought to be strong enough to engage and talk to some other people who don't do like you. So while I was traveling and was trip, while I was overseas among Muslims and Jews and people who don't believe like I believe, I was fine talking to them about the Jesus that I believe and who I serve with. Oh yes, oh yes, without apology, without hesitation, without, without fanfare, without fear, I felt the courage and the responsibility as a child of God to share what Jesus means to me with them. And my challenge to you today is, I just want to challenge you to share Jesus with the people you hang out with. In this particular passage of scripture, Jesus is talking to them and he says to them, as they're traveling, and he's given this story that this, 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 uh, he asked a question in his first parable. And I might talk about these other two parables, parables the next few Sundays, because I feel compelled. I feel, a, I'm, I'm passionate about us getting connected with people to be walking in the will of God for their life. And Jesus tells this parable, he says, he spoke this parable, he says, which one of you men, if you had a hundred sheep, if you lose one of those sheep, wouldn't leave the 99, in, in the, look at this, you leave the 99 while you're in the wilderness and go after the one which was lost until you found it. He, I got three points, four points I want to make here today. First of all, he said, if you own a hundred sheep and you lose one of them, you're going to leave the 99 to go find that one sheep that you lost. Now, what's the economics of that? Why would I, why would I put at risk losing track of the 99 to just find the one? Here's the, here's the story of that. Here's what that means. Here's what God's trying to tell us. That you are so important to him that he'll leave the crowd to come and get you. 
Matter of fact, when you got saved, that's how you got saved. He came and found you. He came to wherever you were, wherever you were hanging out, whatever you were doing, whatever your issue was. He came to the club, the club. He came to the show. He came to the party. He came to the drug house. He came to wherever you were. He thought enough about you to leave where he was and come and get you. Oh, stop acting like you ain't got, you ain't, you didn't, you wasn't someplace you didn't have no business been I'm celebrating that God left the 99 because he considered you valuable he considered you important the Spirit of God didn't just stay in church and just only hang out in church he some of y'all have been on the dance floor some of you been in the middle of doing something you had no business doing and the Holy Spirit convicted you you don't have no business being here you have no business doing this and he convicted you where you were and called you out of darkness into his marvelous light He left the 99 because he considered you valuable. I don't know how you feel about that, but that makes me want to shout and run around this place when I think about that God would leave all of the saints and all of the good good shoe people and the people who dot all the I's and cross all the T's to come after little old me. And that's what he did. And guess what? If you're here today and you ain't right with God, he will come after you wherever you are to help you get right with him. It doesn't matter how how far you have fallen off. It doesn't matter how low you are. It doesn't matter how deep your sin is, how frequently your sin is, how how dirty your sin is, how nasty your sin is. Go ahead, look at your neighbor and say, because you know you're nasty. Go ahead and tell them you're nasty. It doesn't matter what you've done. The blood of Jesus can wash all of your sins away. And he will leave the 99 to come after you. You are that important to God. You are that valuable to the God that we serve. He loves you. He's not waiting for you to get everything straight. That devil will lie and make you think that you got to get everything together and you got to get this straight and you got to stop this before you come and you got to get this in order and you got to get this straight. Oh no! Jesus will take you just where you are, just as you are, and he will come after you. The shepherd left the 99 during the journey while they were in the wilderness. And by the way, let me just take a moment here and just talk for a moment because during the wilderness of this pandemic, we've lost some people. And this is our assignment to go, to go get them. We've lost people who were faithful, dedicated, committed. Well, we thought they were committed, but now they are nowhere to be found. My assignment, my challenge, and my my job today, Jesus is telling us that even that person is important. He left the 99. And then it says right here, he went after the one. Verse 4 says, he left the 99 to go after the one. That's what it says in verse 4, and go after the one. Somebody say, go after the one. Say it again, go after the one. I want to tell you that we got to have, we have to have a go after the one attitude, a a go after the one mentality, a go after the one spirit. We are called to leave the comforts of our lifestyles and go and get that one person. That's all. Here's what I want y'all to do. Here's what I, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about somebody that you know was once plugged in, once faithful, once involved, once dedicated, but now they're nowhere to be found, and I'm challenging you to go get them. Go get them. Go find them. Thank all 17 of y'all for that rousing affirmation. Think about it. Go ahead. Think about it. Write that name down. Put it somewhere in your agenda. Think about that. One person who has strayed. This is, this, is the, this is the assignment from God to you and I today. This is our biblical responsibility. It is the call of the Holy Spirit to challenge us today to go after the one, go after the person that you know, your friend, your coworker, your, 
your uh, ministry team partner, your, your seat partner, because some of you, you know, used to sit next to the same person every Sunday. Y'all do know I could tell who, when you was in church and when you wasn't in church, all I had to do was look in your section to see whether you're there. And you know that there were some people sitting around you that you knew that you had relationship with that you haven't seen since we've been back. And my challenge and my job is to tell you to go after them. Go after that one. Just pick just one. Just find one. Just pick, figure out who that one person is that you, God is calling you to go after. And here's what he did. He, so so he, he left the 99 he's in his parable. He went after the one, and here's what he did. It says here in verse number, I like this right here, in verse number five. And when he has found that one lost sheep, he lays it on his shoulder. You know what that means? He, he, he did, here's, here's my point. He, he did whatever it had to take to get the lost sheep back home. If it meant he had to put that sheep on his shoulder. Translation, if he had to go by his house and drive and pick him up in his own car. Thank all 15 of y'all. It seems like the claps are getting lower and lower and lower. I'm trying to challenge you today to an assignment that God has given us and you and I to do, to go after the one, go after and do whatever it takes to get them back connected to the kingdom. Do whatever it takes to get them back plugged in. I know people got a so-called thousand reasons for why they haven't come back to church. A thousand reasons. But you know what I discovered? I flew back from Saudi Arabia and the plane was full. I went to the Disney World of Dubai, in Dubai. It was jam packed. I watched the basketball games on television and the stadiums are filled. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you today? The grocery stores have sold out of baby formula. No, people are going where they want to go. Are y'all listening to me? They're doing what they want to do. Now, I don't know what you feel, and I know people have gotten accustomed to bedroom Baptist. I know people like sitting in kitchen cathedral, having church, watching television on this cathedral but there ain't nothing like being in the house in the worship among the people there's nothing like raising your hands among the sights if you can get to church get to church get in the house get in the building there's a presence here that can't be translated across the tail wave. There's something special and anointed about being in the house. Do whatever it takes to get them in the house. Do whatever it takes. If you have to go pick them up, go pick them up. Thank you. Do whatever it takes. Carry the burden. Carry the responsibility. Do whatever it takes to help get them back and pray them back into the kingdom. Pray. Oh, I don't, I, I feel tension in the room. There's tension. I feel tension in the room and I feel tension across the airwaves. Because there are people saying, well, I can't worship God from my house. Yes, you can. That's true. I hope that you have a worshipful lifestyle. But there's something spectacular about being amongst the sights of God. That's why I, I call for all of our international members. Here's what I want our international members to do. I want them to get people saved where, in whatever country you're in whatever state you're in, get other people saved. And when you get other people in your community saved, y'all start having service together wherever you are. 
find a place to set up. Matter of fact, I'm going to say this. If we get a certain number of people in a certain area of a, of a, of a state or another country, we, we will get the equipment to help you set up a screen and a computer to help you watch church together. Yes, we will. Now, it's got to be more than just you and your wife, but I mean, when you get like... <laughs> Or you and your kids, I'm, you get a few people in the area and y'all commit to meet, meeting together because there's something special about the, the gathering of the people of God. It's just, the, the Bible says, don't forsake the gathering together of yourselves. There's something special and powerful about being around other people and connecting with other people and fellowshipping with other people and being held accountable by other people. There's something special and spectacular about the kingdom of God. That's how it works. And that's my challenge to you today. Jesus tells this parable and he says not only did he do whatever it takes in verses 5 through 7, he took, five, he took three verses in this whole first part of this parable. Verses 5, 6, and 7, he says this, and when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and then he says this, he rejoices. He rejoices. There's something amazing when, when we see a saint coming to Jesus, when we see a lost person coming to get right with God, when we see a lost person walking down the aisles to say, I want to get right and accept Jesus, there ought to be a shout that goes out in the church. There ought to be a praise that goes forth. There ought to be people that will celebrate and give God the glory that we've snatched somebody out of the pit of hell and snatch somebody from the hands of the devil or snatch somebody from being lost we ought to rejoice he said rejoicing and when he comes home he calls together his friends and neighbors verse 8 6 saying to them rejoice with me for I have found my sheep which was lost I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just person who needs no repentance this is so important to God that God says when one soul gets saved, all of heaven pauses and shouts and celebrates and gives him the praise when one soul comes and gets right with the almighty God. I don't know where you are, but that's what moves my heart. When I see one person say, I want to get right with Jesus. I want to follow Christ. I want to rededicate myself. I want to be in the right place place the Bible says heaven shouts and rejoices hallelujah Whew. I get excited about that I'm rejoicing about that that's that's the heart of God and my challenge to you and I today is that we will be the people who will rejoice and give God the glory and the praise Somebody here today, you're going to come. You're going to get out of your seat in just a few moments, and you're going to say, I want to get right with God. The devil has tricked you long enough into thinking that you're too far past, you're too far gone, you can't get right. You got to wait till you get this straight. You have to wait till you get that right. There's too much that the devil has tricked you, but now we are coming to kill that lie from the devil and tell you to come just as you are. Matter of fact, you might have to just get on up and come right now and say, I don't care what anybody else thinks about me or says about me. I know that the heavens are going to rejoice and the angels are going to shout and God is going to get the glory. Get up out of your seat and come and say yes to Jesus right now. I'm proud of you, bro. That's right. I'm proud of you, bro. Somebody else, come on, that's right, come on, right now, right this moment. Don't delay it, don't put it off. Jesus died on the cross so you could have eternal life. Hallelujah, I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. This is the time, this is the moment. This is the appropriate time. You say, you know what, I want to get right with God. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want to rededicate my heart. I want to know the Lord Jesus. While the blood is running warm 
in your veins and you have the activities of your limbs, come and say yes to the Lord Jesus right now. I'm proud of you, bro. So proud of you. Oh, yeah, we're rejoicing. We are rejoicing. So proud of you. Step right here, baby. That's right. I see you. Come on. I see you. That's right. That, don't debate it. Come now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right this moment. So proud of you. Step right here. So proud of you, man. Step right over there. So proud of you. Maybe you're unsure of your eternal destiny and you want assurance. Come, we can help you with that. Maybe you're already saved, but you just want to join our church. This here is a great church for you to be a part of. Right now will be the time to come. Come on and say yes. On the screen, yeah. For those online, there's a number for you to call. There's an email for you to send an email to. There's a button for you to click. And we'll give you instructions to get in the right place with God. We will help you say yes to that. You fall in any one of those areas. Unsaved, you drifted away from God and you want to rededicate yourself to him. You're not sure, you want assurance, or you're already saved and you want to join this church. Right now is the time for you oh, to come. The snow shuttle. I'm so proud of you. The snow That's right. Come, come on, come, come. So I see you. So proud of you, man. Step right here. Come on, come on, come on, come. Rejoice with those who have already come. That's all right, brother. Take your time. We'll wait for however long it takes. Take your time. All right. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Help me give God a shout for every last one of these souls. I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you. And the scripture says, 
the heavens are rejoicing over your decision. If it was just you by yourself, all of heaven would have shouted and broke out in a dance because you decided to say yes to the will of God for your life. I'm so proud of you. I'm going to pray for you. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you to a room, sit down and talk to you, find out why you came, and give you instructions on how to get you to the place where God wants you to be. All right? Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these souls today. So grateful for every last one. Pray that you fill them with your spirit. Let their faith be ignited toward you. Let them get settled in your kingdom. Forgive them of their sins. Wash them in your blood. Fill them with the Holy Spirit and use them for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. There's no shadow in love you all. I miss you. I'm so glad to be back. Don't forget, four to six, stop by the Family Life Center to show some love to our First Lady. Be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you in Jesus' name. Have a great day.